In this video, I'll show you how to use a new feature in Dynamics 365 V9 that supports using webhooks to create external handlers for server events. So the documentation does a good job of explaining what webhooks are and the scenarios in which using webhooks makes sense. One of the walkthroughs in the documentation shows you how to use a site called Request Bin. And Request Bin, as it says, gives you a URL that collects uh, requests made to it and will let you inspect them in a human-friendly way. Uh, you can use Request Bin to see what your HTTP client is sending or to inspect and debug webhook requests. So I'll create one of these real quick. And notice what it does. It gives you a URL. You can just copy that URL and make calls to it. And it gives you examples of how to do it in different languages. But in this case, I'm just going to use Postman here. And ignore this stuff for now. If I just click Send, and I come over here and click refresh, you'll notice that a call was made to this URL. And what Request Bin will do is just give you a nice visual representation of the HTTP request. And as you can see here, this matches what I sent from Postman. There's a body, I sent a JSON string that represents an object with the first name of post and the last of man. And it just kind of gives you that nice, easy visual way to inspect things. And so what we're going to do, just as the documentation suggests, is we're going to use this URL to make a request to request bin from Dynamics 365 using the new webhooks feature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and register a new webhook. I'll give just call it request bin. And then I'll give it that URL. And then we'll add a key. And in this case, typically what you do with a webhook is you provide um, some sort of API key. And there are a number of ways that Dynamics 365 supports this, but the option I'm going to use is an HTTP header. So we'll just call this you know, x-sum-api-key and some fake value. Because in this case, the paste bin URL doesn't actually require um, an API key. So I'll save that. And so we've just registered a webhook. This is much like registering a .NET plugin except instead of the plugin execution context being passed to some .NET code, the plugin execution context gets passed to an HTTP endpoint. And similar to the plugin registration and step registration process, we need to come in here and register a new step. And we'll register a create on contact. And I'll leave the defaults and register that step. So again, much like plugin message registration, what I've done here is I said, when a contact is created, pass the execution context to this HTTP endpoint. Whereas with a traditional plugin registration, what we say is pass the execution context to some .NET code. Again, instead, we're passing it to an HTTP endpoint. So in many ways, we're creating a plugin that executes outside of the context of Dynamics 365. And as you can imagine, there are some benefits to that, such as being able to execute full trust code, not having to worry about you doing things like IL merge for referenced assemblies, etc. All right, so now that we've got this wired up, I should be able to come over here and create a new contact. I'll just call it uh, request bin, and I'll save that. And so now if I come over to my request bin page, I should be able to refresh this. And you can see, in fact, that this time the call to re this request bin URL was from Dynamics 365. We can see some of the dynamic specific HTTP headers, like the entity name, the Dynamics 365 organization. And then in the body, we have a full JSON payload that re represents the execution context. So to the point of the documentation, Azure Functions provide an, an excellent way to deliver a solution using webhooks, but it's not a requirement because webhooks are a well-known approach used in the industry. But it just so happens that Azure Functions are a great way to create a webhook endpoint that can execute some code. So let's go over to a, an Azure subscription I have here. And let's create an Azure function. Now there's lots of great content out there on Azure Functions, including lots of advanced scenarios. I'm going to keep this example very simple just to show the mechanism in which you connect Dynamics 365 to an Azure function using the facility that 
we've already started to walk through. So I'll come over here and I'll create a new function. And we'll pick API and webhooks, and we'll pick the generic webhook C Sharp. As you notice, Azure Function supports a number of languages. I'm just choosing C Sharp because that's my language of choice. And we'll call this DYN test. And go ahead and create it. All right, so I want to keep this simple, so I'm going to clean up a bunch of this stuff. And really all we're going to do here is log the contents of the HTTP request and return an OK status code. So all we have to do is say log.info right here, JSON content. One of the nice things about Azure Functions is you can come over here and you can just test it from right within the browser. So I'll click Run. Notice that I sent this text. And the log demonstrates here that I did, in fact, execute the function. All right, so how do you call the function from an HTTP endpoint? I'll click the get function URL here, copy that. And I'm going to bring up Notepad real quick to break some things up because there are different ways to call Azure Functions, and I prefer to use HTTP headers. So I'm going to separate the actual function endpoint from the API key. I don't need any of this stuff. So now I'm just using the API key and the function endpoint. And so I'll come back over to Dynamics 365. We can go ahead and uh, unregister all this because we've already proven that this plumbing works. And I'll register a new webhook and we'll call this AZ Funk. Let's go ahead and grab that URL. And then we'll add an HTTP header. And this, the way that functions expects the API key, it's X functions key. And then I need to provide that value. So let's go over to here, grab the key and paste that in. I'll save that. We'll do the same thing we did before. We'll register a new step. I'll create of a contact. And we'll register that. So very similarly, I should be able to come over here now, create another new contact. In this case, we'll call it AZ Funk. And I'm not going to click Save yet. I'll snap this over here. And let's take this over here. Let's go ahead and close that. And let's get the, the logs expanded here. And let's snap this over here. So what we should be able to see now is in this log, when I click Save, we'll see that the actual plugin execution context will show up over here. So I click Save. Boom. Now if I expand this, we'll see that there is, in fact, the plugin execution context that was passed over. Now, of course, in my function, I'm not doing anything other than just logging this. But at this point, you could do all the things that you can do within Azure Functions, including executing full trust code, referencing third-party assemblies without having to worry about IL merge, etc. All right, so in this video, I showed you how to use the new webhook feature of Dynamics 365 to create an external handler for servers or events, very similar to how you wire up server events for .NET plugins, except in this case, we showed how to do it with an HTTP webhook, and then we showed you how easy it is to use Azure Functions in conjunction with this feature to write some externally hosted code to execute very similar to how we would with a .NET plugin.